So we've been making progress through the quests in Economia and all that. But the feeling that the primordial one might not be as they seem is slowly creeping its way to the back of my head. And adding to that, the actions of Kanria and Ankanamiya, especially of Rhine and her primordial human project, and the actions of the god of time, Istaroth, to the people of Ankanamiya. And finally, those who kept the lost books of Ankanamiya's history. It does get us all closer to what is in Celestia or what happened in the Cataclysm, but it also feels more and more vague with the additional names, titles, and timelines. Even the riddles and short stories both add and model my previous theories. Hey guys, what's up? And welcome to a new theory video. This was supposed to be an assumption of mine from the previous Albedo Explained series, but now it seems a little more relevant to talk about it since the release of Enkanomiya and the Primordial One Fanes is in the picture now, as well as the interactions of Enkanomiya and Kanria within the Evernight region itself. You can start here or watch the two other videos first but it's it's fine if you don't want to. I'll still recap a bit to keep you guys caught up to what I'm talking about. So without further ado, let's move on to the video. Okay, so far all we know about Rindo Tear is that she is Gold, the quote-unquote evil alchemist of Conria, and that she made the monsters in the Cataclysm as well as being capable of making sentient beings. She has something called the Primordial Human Project, and lastly, she has in her possession the Heart of Noberius. Putting all those together, I don't really think that there's much to think about since Rhine slash Gold was part of the war between Celestia and Conria, meaning that she has knowledge of what happened prior to that war, as long as being alive to this day. Gold, or Rhine, was able to create sentient beings that can think for themselves and be autonomous in nature, but is still obedient to Gold's or Conria's commands. Her creations being the Rift Hounds and Whelps that we fight, where I'm sure we'll meet more variations of these Rift creatures down the line, and are classified as Alphysol, which translates to leached basic soil with high native fertility, which means that the materials used to create the wolves is probably the most abundant resource. Second is Durin, her masterpiece classified as hummus, symbolizing Durin's rotting aesthetic, and the general characteristic of hummus soils which are usually taken from decaying matter, things like dead corpse, manure, plants, and trees. Generally, anything that's decaying can be classified as hummus, hence Durin's aesthetic and his name the Black Dragon. Lastly, we have Albedo and Primordial Albedo, two separate things, which are the fruits of Gold's Primordial Human Project, and very important ones at that. Why? Because it signifies that Gold can make a literal human being that's more autonomous than a Raiden Shogun puppet of A, and it gives Gold the power to create humans that are tuned specifically to Kanria or her preferences. That means that she can make the perfect human being that has no flaws or weaknesses, and possesses whichever quirky ability she would want it to have. Lastly, the Heart of Naberius. This heart is still an anomaly because we only know of it from Albedo's story alone. And taking some context from some demonology websites, Naberius is the Marquis of the Underworld responsible for removing the ranks and honors of demons, who was one day allowed to enter the realm of the gods. Whether or not Naberius was able to take a god's power and rank compared to the demons that he once did, we don't know yet. Now onto the part where we start to make theories. Back in my video where I explained Fanes, I said that when the Enkanamians finished making the Dainichi Mikoshi and were able to keep the baptismal bishops at bay, they then wanted to go back up to the surface. But to their surprise, they were stopped by the Primordial One because the Primordial One apparently had laid down a so-called ban. But the book never mentioned that they physically saw the Primordial One place it or saw Fanes himself or itself when they were on their way to the surface. They did say that it was the Primordial One that placed it but they also said that it must have been the Primordial One that did as well as assuming that it beat the second one that came. Meaning that the people of Enkanamiya could have just assume that the primordial one beat the second one and assume that the ban was placed by the primordial one too. As to the reason why, so far the books don't mention that yet, which opens up the possibility that it might be the second one that placed the ban instead of Fanes, and that the primordial one was beaten by the second one instead. If that's true, then the great heavens that we see every day 
might already have been commandeered by something we know nothing about, and that for the last unknown amount of years, Tevet has been controlled by a god that we don't know, and now runs amok within the floating abode of Celestia. If this is true, then Gold might have been using the heart of Naberius to create a certain being, a primordial being, one that can fight the usurped throne of the gods, and one that can free the shackles of humans from the control and sight of these so-called gods. Sadly, we've yet to know about the reasons why the heart of Naberius is there, what property it holds, and what exactly the reason is to why Rindo Tear disappeared with it. Lastly, we've yet to know if the gods of Celestia truly are treating humanity in an unfair way, because we don't really have a proper written text or meaning of the heavenly principles that were placed upon the humans anyway. You could be asking me, well, Aru, what happened to the primordial one? Wasn't he supposed to fight the second one? Well, to me, what I think is that the primordial primordial one might already be dead, and that the second one is taking the wheel of Celestia. But one thing that the second one didn't think about is that one of the shades was still answering the cries of the Enconomians, which would mean that Easteroth, the god of time, was either told by fiends to keep the Enconomians from perishing while they fought the second one. And once the second one beat fiends and the other three shades, it put down that ban on Enconomia and went to take over Teyvat and make its new world. This theory could explain why the Orobashi forbade the use of the final riddle from the book In the Light Beneath the Shadows, which would mean that Orobashi was trying to hide the existence of Easteroth from the gods of Celestia or from the second one who may or may not know about her yet, and Easteroth being able to preserve histories and key moments using sin shades and apparitions, and even make alternate worlds like the mirror library we walked into, means that Easteroth kept those key books, events, people, and items for someone to find and be able to unfold the real truth of both Enconomia, Teyvat, and possibly the truth about Celestia and Conria as well. Sadly, by saving the Enconomians and bringing them up to the surface, the Watatsumi Omikami had to be met with a punishment by the heavens. But before all that happened, it seems that he forbade certain things that the Enconomians knew from spreading to the surface. One of the things that he forbade was a children's riddle about the year. This riddle is pretty short, but it was supposed to be continued by hinting at 12 hours, 60 minutes, and 60 seconds. Once you put all those children and their offspring together, meaning that if you put together all the numbers in time, you get a whole year. And this riddle ends by mentioning the Okami Tokoyo, the god of time, which I think is the reason why it was forbidden in the first place. The Book of Riddles itself hides multiple conspiracies other than what I've said, such as the bishops transforming into humans, the sin shades and how they came to be, and lastly, the riddle about the god of time, as well as how she's purposefully written to encompass all forms of time, which would be a cause for alarm especially for a usurper of the eternal heavenly thrones. If the second one found out that Easteroth was one of the four shades of fanes and that she was able to bring back vital information and knowledge from the past and bring it with her to the future or somewhere in time, it will eventually catch up to the humans and basically everyone in the surface will find out that the gods of Celestia today is a lie but was under a tyrannical rule by a god that they thought was the primordial one, and that they were never being protected in the first place. Now again, this is all just theory, and the primordial one could still be alive, as well as another theory where the primordial one was in cahoots with the second one all this time, which could explain the randomness for Fanes and the Three Shades to suddenly not care about the people that they themselves created. But the conflict there is that Fanes and the Three Shades know that Easteroth, the god of time, is still alive, and still haven't told the second one. Another reason why I'm sticking to the primordial one may have died is that of all the other shades, it was the god of time who was the one who was sent down or went and helped the Enconomians by herself, which was the one god who was able to pass down information and leave her phantasmal shades to pass over crucial knowledge about the old kingdom. Mind you, crucial knowledge and not just random events as well as keeping certain secrets by the Orobashi, including human bishop hybrids and the god that encompasses all forms of time. Unfortunately, we're only left to theory and speculation until a new hard fact is dropped upon us by the gods of Mihoyo. And that's where I'll end my ramblings for now. As always, comment below on what you think about the whole second war happening and why it's 
as vague as it is. Of course, do hit the like or dislike if you find this video interesting or not at all. Lastly, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to stay up to date to more of my videos. That's gonna be it and I'll see you around in the next one, yeah? Anyways, bye!